know she had to audition. Uh, you know, they, they actually called from LA on a Memorial Day weekend saying that they're all flying down because they had seen her resume. They had, um, uh, they actually reached out and she had been training with John Aston, who's her mentor, who plays uh, Mr. Gomes um, in the Adams Family. So she studied with him for four years at Johns Hopkins where she did a major in art history and a minor in theater. And she selected Hopkins because of John Aston, who is the head of theater there. And uh, she acted in the role of Nama Giri, uh, which is the goddess uh, for Spotlight Theater while she was at college. But Spotlight Theater is um, it's a professional theater company in, um, in uh, Baltimore. So while she was a student, she played the role of Namagiri. The producers heard about it and they were looking for an Indian actress in that age group. And um, they came down and uh, auditioned her, spoke to her, um, had her uh, record certain things that they wanted, certain scenes. And, um, and they actually uh, told her because she texted me saying, I, uh, I'm, you know, they're going to cast me. So um, it actually came to me on a text, and uh, and then they went back to LA, and uh, and then I guess she waited for when they would, you know, sign up, and then they signed her up uh, for the role of Janaki, and then I think months later she met with De Patel because she had to act with him and had scenes, so they wanted to. Uh, get all of them together to get to know them. And she used to talk frequently, both email, Skype, and meet um, her director, Matt Brown, as to what he was expecting of Janaki. Well, actually, you know, my mother, who's 83 and lives with me, um, you know, I flew her down to Toronto. And it's a very amusing story because, um, you know, she's not able to walk uh, rapidly. So she stood at the end of the red carpet and everybody told her now, you know, you have to uh, move away. And they moved everybody out of that area and she looked at them straight with all their walkie-talkies and, you know, she said, I've come all the way from India to see my granddaughter walk the red carpet in Toronto and she stood with a stick and she said, and I'm not moving from here. And I was standing at the side and I saw everyone's reaction was like, oh, okay. They, they didn't really know how to react. And, uh, you know, so I was really focusing on her because I was trying to take her to the side. And then, uh, you know, the car uh, pulled up, you know, and, um, and, and she got down. And actually, even for me, I was kind of stunned because I don't know what I was expecting. And I'm not someone who really watches a lot of red carpets, so, uh, you know, um, and to see her, you know, getting down and having cameras going click, 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 thousands of cameras and people shouting, you know, the, the, on, on the sides and, you know, and, um, and she had two people with her guiding her exactly where to walk. I was quite amused and I, I thought, I said, wow, this is called walking a red carpet. And, um, you know, um, she went up, uh, different fans called out and she went to them and, um, uh, you know, talk to them, some took selfies with her. So, so you know, I think um, she handled it beautifully as everyone told her that you're a natural. For me, it was a question of being thrilled to see my mother being able to watch her granddaughter and to then focus a little on saying, wow, this is incredible, you know. And then I think the, the press loved it so much when they found out that um, you know, I had walked earlier the red carpet, <clears throat> but uh, they were like three generations, you know, your mother is here. So they actually took a lot of pictures on the red carpet with my daughter, me and my mother. And they thought that it was lovely to have, you know, her mother and grandmother here to support her. You know, so it was, it was quite exciting, you know, not something I expected. You know, I've, I've uh, often, uh, you know, been criticized as I used to train her from the time she was young that you're not um, appreciative of her. And I used to say most mothers are very indulgent with their children. 
um, that anything the daughter does is wonderful, their daughters are lovely, their daughters are beautiful, their daughters are perfect. Um, especially, um, I would say, in an American culture, you know, affirmation constantly. I grew up in a very traditional home and a background where both my parents, especially my mother, did not believe in uh, praise, the word praise and constantly giving affirmation. And someone even said, oh, somebody's pretty, she used to say, well, at 16, even a donkey looks beautiful. You know, Shaudasha Varshe Prapte Gardhavi Api Apsara Bhave. So even a donkey at 16 looks like an Apsara. So it was a culture, it was a way of life. My own guru, I'm Sonal Man Singh's first disciple. There was no praise ever. She used to say, you're grateful that I'm allowing you to dance in my presence. Now that same tradition has continued where I taught her and trained her. So if she ever got a role, I used to generally tell her, you're not going to get it. And if she got it, I used to say, well, now you have to really work at it. And then after she had done it, I used to say, well, you know, you have to improve here and there. So people would say, but don't you think you need to, I said, I am first her guide and mentor, then her mother. As a mother, yes, I'm very proud. But I always look as an artist of, of what I'm looking. So she usually does come to me after performances, what did you think? Because she knows, you know, it's not going to be a lot of just saying, oh, you were wonderful, or, you know, you, you know. And, and, uh, and she's had a wonderful teacher in John Aston, who was her mentor and teacher. And uh, I used to joke with him, I said, John, I'm so happy you're teaching her now and it's not me and that she really hates you because that hate is transferred from me to you because she really wants to work at making you um, proud of her because she used to say, God, I really can't stand him. And I said, John, you've done your job. I said, I really like it. So as far as, you know, when you say, how do I rate her performance, um, you know, I, I hate to be going down in, you know, verbally to say that, yes, she was outstanding. And um, I hate to say it because, you know, um, I think others should say it. You know, she was, she's not the main character. Ramanujan is the main role. Then there's Hardy. But I believe that, you know, you don't have to act in, you know, 99% of a film. A performance comes through. Yes, it depends on, uh, you know, how it is also um, the opportunities or the giving it length of a certain role. But you have to do your very best to make any character whole. And if, you know, you can do that, then it's meaningful. And that's where I think, um, you know, um, it was, I'm sure, challenging to be even on a screen where you're watching a film with a Jeremy Irons in it and a Stephen Fry. And, uh, you know, these are veterans of the highest caliber. So I think uh, she was fortunate that she had a chance to share a film with them and Arundhati Nag, who, who I think is an outstanding actress. And um, hearing, um, you know, having them interact with her, being so nice to her and so encouraging, I think that's just been fabulous. I mean, Arundhati was so wonderful uh, talking to her, telling her, you know, you're outstanding. I was like, coming from Arundhati for you, wow. Um, Stephen Fry sitting and telling her, giving her tips, um, how to go forward in her career, what to do. Uh, Jeremy Irons uh, joking in Zurich saying, uh, you know, I, I heard her at one point saying, can I move away because everyone's taking your picture. And he said, no, darling, they're taking the picture because you're in the picture. Now just look at, you know, the, the humility and the, the grace and, um, you know, very, very um, affectionate, fatherly, grandfatherly, whatever, you know, uh, almost like a mentor. He was just wonderful. Um, Dave, on the other hand, uh, during the filming, they had a great time as in, you know, they were youngsters. I think the first time Dave's had someone younger than him acting. Uh, on the, you know, and he would always like, you know, he used to all kid around, fool around, joke around. There were three, four of them in that age group and, you know, and nicknamed her Baby Bise, you know. <laughs> so um, he, on the other hand, uh, was very helpful. I know during shooting also, you know, um, he would, you know, say, you know, why don't you move to this side or this side because I'm blocking you, I'm so tall. 
So you know, so she worked with all of them who were fabulously working as a cohesive group and um, you know, were very, very nice uh, you know, to someone like her who it's her first time in, in this kind of a setup and environment. Uh, that's a very interesting question. Um, I would love to, um, you know, take credit for, for her wonderful acting. But I don't think that that would be 100% correct. Um, the director, Matt Brown, was very gracious in um, Goa, I believe, uh, telling, a, telling the press that actually, um, you know, they asked him how did, how did um, an American girl, you know, was so authentic in her role. And he said, oh, I had nothing to do with that. You know, her mother <laughs> trained her and uh, directed her for that part. But um, I think I can take credit for the fact that I trained her, but training her in Indian classical dance, but I gave her exposure. She is not somebody who just grew up there. She came in her early years, twice a year, spent almost four or five months in India, went to every Kishori Amonkar concert and Pandit Jasraj. She trained with Marina Alam, who's Pandit Jasraj's first disciple for nine years. Um, uh, trained in Carnatic music with Savitri Ramanand, who's my vocalist in New York. She's one of the Bombay sisters. So I can possibly say that exposing her to Carnatic music, Hindustani uh, music, making her watch even um, I run a theatre festival in Goa, making her watch different plays, you know, and not just saying everything American is necessarily great, but to watch beautiful Marathi theatre, exposure to my own guru's performance, uh, you know, um, uh, Srimati Sonal Mansingh, uh, exposing her to temples, architectures, taking her to Odisha and when I'm busy as to say well here's a camera and go around Konarak the temple and see what you've learnt and you know relating temple architecture and sculptures to the dance form or saying which poses do you see uh, what is this young girl Mugdha Naika how do you know she's standing like this what so doing beyond just learning movement thinking thinking movement uh, not just a religion studying mythology questioning what was the role of Draupadi, you know, how can one see her in today's context. The class was not just about dance, it was, you know, how would you perceive Sita in today's time? Why judge Sita as in today's terms what she was then? What are the aspects of the Mahabharat? So to be able to say, okay, think for a week and answer and write me a, you know, synopsis on it, which I had with my other students as well. Um, you know, gave a really in, intense understanding of India, not just someone who's coming and saying, oh, I love Indian, Indian, and I'm half Indian, or I'm American, or I don't know. It's, I've emphasized on, you are not an Indian Indian. You are a global citizen. Learn to be one. Learn to take advantage of the beauty of India, the beauty of its culture, and make the best of what you have, the beauty of American theatre and arts and jazz and a cappella, which you sing. She sings professionally as well. I said, I'm a product of India. I'm not going to try and make myself something else. You're a product of two beautiful cultures. Bring the best and put it together without losing it. So I would only say that I could take credit for having guided her, not in one direction or the other, but um, sustaining each of the strengths um, and having a very strong rooted culture and then saying fly from there to whatever aspects of it. So I would only say that I did, uh, I said who was Janaki, I discussed it with her. She of course was talking to Matt Brown on aspects of how the role should be done. But she was a young girl and young girls were Tamilian Brahmin, how they would look, talk, you know, the way they would talk, the eyes, or you know, stand around their mother-in-law, or how they would serve food, um, was a certain way in which I did 
share with her. I said, you know, if you've got the thali and the diya and I want you to walk around the house in Amadi, sir, and talk to your grandmother. Sit and talk to her. Sit and do the same gestures. I don't want the gestures of a girl in uh, trousers. Uh, well, I think uh, with, with film making, I mean, um, there's so many aspects. Uh, you know, she graduated from university and she was fairly academically inclined and had done theatre and had won a Woodrow Wilson Award and a Hudson Award and everyone told her now you should apply for this award and you know scholarships and and she said well no this is my passion acting and I've been there done all the in fact she was very good at mathematics and uh, you know it was something she did for many years um, and now that she's thrown herself into acting um, it's been I'd say a fairly uh, intense journey and I often tell her that as an uh, American uh, born Indian girl, I would one day want you to share with the world in an honest fashion what are the opportunities for you as I see mainly, um, you know, you'll see a hundred uh, uh, blonde girls acting how many do you see Indian, Indian? And it's almost a research that I've wanted to do because you'll see Asian, so that's China, Japan, Korea. We don't fall in that. There's American, which is white, then there's Hispanic. So you have that. And then you have um, European, you know, the French make the actresses, the Swedish, you know. the, And then you have um, the whole Californian look, you know. So I'm very curious to see, uh, especially for the women, what are the opportunities that come about. Um, I think things are changing for, for the best. Uh, you know, um, everyone talks about uh, uh, Priyanka Chopra having gone in uh, and done Quantico. And I think that's fabulous. And you know, she's a huge star. So that's very different. But for the young generation to come in, um, even with Quantico, I think it's an ABC production. I don't think it's a Hollywood production. So I want to see more Indian faces in Hollywood. I want to see Hollywood movies with, um, you know, using Indian actors and actresses, because I think they're all wonderful. Um, I know that uh, I recently saw Airlift, again a brilliant movie, and the girl who was in uh, Homeland and um, and in, I think, uh, Lunchbox, uh, Nimrit Kaur. And she's, you know, a big name. And so we're seeing a little, little, little. With Devika, she acted in Elementary. It's a TV show. Uh, so she had two episodes, which she got. Um, so she acted in those, which was fabulous. And you get a lot of coverage. She's, um, uh, she was cast in a film with called Shambhala and it's actually right now being shot but um, um, her part I believe is um, being shot next month and so she's going to be doing that. It's a zeitgeist film production called Shambhala where the director is uh, Summer Nix and they're shooting in Manali and she's actually interestingly playing an American girl in the movie and um, as I uh, see from her blurbs that they had Jonathan Rhys Meyers cast in that film and then she's uh, been speaking with other directors uh, you know um, of different stories but I think every time people come up with stories approach they're all looking for funding and I'm finding that a very interesting aspect of Hollywood so I think a lot of them wait till they get all their funding done so those are plans she's acting I know that she's part of different writers groups. She likes to write herself, so she's writing. She's um, learning a lot. She's been very fortunate with her acting um, in uh, theater as well, uh, which she um, had done uh, uh, a year ago um, on Off-Broadway. 
Uh, she got signed up with Canna Entertainment, so they are her managers in New York, uh, Kathy Canna. And then after the film was seen in Toronto, she also has an agent, Alison Devi, who is with Innovative, which is again a very big, respected um, uh, company. And um, so, you know, to, to act, I guess, you need the guidance of all these people to, because they get the scripts and they send you out on auditions. So, fairly busy, um, you know, working with all these and learning the ropes um, of an interesting field. You know, it's different from theater. It's film is film.